The latest National Defense Authorization Act gets rid of a Pentagon office that's gotten credit for $37 billion in savings for the military. The current chief management officer says she hasn't been asked to testify before Congress about the office's savings or operations. Lisa Hirschman is the chief management officer at the Department of Defense and maybe the last one. Lisa, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Uh, you said recently that $37 billion number went straight to the warfighter. Give me some examples, if you can, about how that money has gone from fourth estate accounts and reform efforts to the tip of the spear. Sure. As a, as a matter of fact, the $37 billion was from DOD-wide, so that included the military services as well. And my role is charged with finding the money. I then turn it over to Comptroller, and they look at what the highest priority needs are and assign that money or shift that money to those needs. As way of ex uh, By way of example, hypersonics investment is a big priority for DOD. And I know that some of our money went directly to investing in hypersonics research. But even from my own uh, team's abilities and efforts, we've looked at contracts and have been able to get more for less. For example, we have a contract for um, military equipment and we were able to keep the value of the contract the same but get 26 additional units. And so that, again, went right to and had a direct impact on the warfighter. Some of these contracts that we've renegotiated actually took two, three, and four years off of implementation time so that our men and women who are on the front lines fighting get more advanced equipment that they can use and not wait up to four years in order to take advantage of those uh, advances. So those are just some of the examples of what we've been able to accomplish. You've been pretty adamant and pretty outspoken as long as a year ago you and I talked about this issue at the Reagan Forum, talking about the successes that you have had, that you believe that you've had in your tenure as the CMO. That's now a moot point, it appears. What do you think a structure looks like that's successful that could do the same thing in a new administration, in the new construct that Congress has created for the Defense Department, Lisa? I will tell you, I am deeply concerned about the construct that has been uh, put forward primarily because it has proven to have failed in the past. A, a lesser role with lesser authority had a run for 10 years and could only produce about $7 billion across those 10 years in less than three years. And again, remember, we haven't even hit our three-year anniversary of the stand-up of the CMO. That $37 billion validated by Comptroller, by GAO, is significant and the, the secret to that success was taking private sector uh, expertise which they called for specifically in the law and applying it to DOD which we have done. It also requires a level of authority uh, right now the role is at the number three position at DOD it can't be done uh, without that level of authority. And that's not unique to DOD. I saw that with all of my clients and my own personal experience in the private sector, which is close to 30 years of doing this, and uh, it can't happen without that level of authority. Look, reform is hard, and you have to make some tough decisions, and if you don't have the authority behind it, it's not gonna happen. We succeeded despite the fact that we never had a charter we never had funding for this, and we're still able to put, you know, five times the amount of savings in under three years that others couldn't achieve in 10. Uh, you know, the way they had it was working, and we proved that. They just uh, stopped paying attention to the tra trajectory and the results, the validated results. I don't know what level of discussion you've had with President-elect Biden's transition team, Lisa, but I'm paraphrasing from the Defense News report about this. All duties and responsibilities of CMO's office dispersed among different officials as directed by the Secretary of Defense. Is there anything, to your knowledge, to prevent uh, Secretary nominee Austin, if he's confirmed as the Secretary of Defense, from creating a similar role with a different name? where all of that authority is concentrated and reports to him, the construct could be the same 
um, but compliant with the legislation and, and get the similar or same results? I think there is an opportunity to do that. In fact, there have been a lot of uh, suggested formats to continue to keep the role at the authority level that it currently has. And like you said, maybe call it something different. As a matter of fact, GAO repeatedly has suggested that two DEPSEC DEFs be created, one to look at readiness, lethality, uh, foreign relations, the alter ego of the secretary, while the other DEPSEC DEF role would focus on operations and management and enablement of the services. So that's one example that would continue the success by maintaining the proper level of authority. Apply your consultant uh, hat, your knowledge, experience to the question that I've asked a number of people about OSD over the last five years. Have we reached a point where there are so many changes on an annual basis that it becomes impossible to determine whether things are working the way that they were originally intended? The ATL job is different now, split into two. Your job was changed and then changed again. Have we hit that point where it's becoming impossible to know whether things are working? Yes. As a matter of fact, every even small businesses are given a three to five year trajectory to see if they are able to make it. And we've not been given that same opportunity. And it's very difficult. Let me give you an example is uh, previous NDAAs gave the chief management officer and the organization authority over uh, business systems within about four months of us taking that on and really getting the infrastructure put in place and getting the staffing put in place and some level of budget, it was already being written out. And so, yes, it becomes a very difficult task when those kind of changes continue to be made and you don't even get a chance to accomplish anything. Let me add on top of that is Congress gives a lot of input on structure, but never talks about expected outcomes. And so, what you know, you, you uh, and, and my role is is included in that. OMB set targets, which we've beaten every single year. But there is this uh, this divide or this gap between what's expected and yet what's put in place. They keep focusing on putting in place an infrastructure with no accountability, no outcomes, nothing uh, that they are asking you to achieve. And so I don't understand how the structure is ahead of expected outcomes. Lisa Hirschman, 20 seconds left. What's on your agenda for January 21st? <laughs> well, you know what? I haven't even thought about that yet. There are still so many important things to take across the finish line, make sure that we've got the infrastructure put in place to continue some of the great work. I still have six, uh, $6.2 billion that I'm ready to book for FY22, all through reform, Not a, with very few cuts, we've gotten away from that draconian approach. And I still want to book that before, my go, before I go. And so getting across the finish line with a huge success for the team is what matters to me. Thanks very much, Lisa.